You see, warriors are people who confidently make choices about where and how to focus their internal attention. We are not living from the outside in. We're living from the inside out. Yeah? And I'm making choices about where my internal focus of attention, what am I going to focus on next? Because I know that God is in here. He said He'd never leave me, never forsake me. And the truth of that is I carry Him around with me. So carry Him into every situation. So I'm internalizing my circumstances and saying, Lord, what are you up to? What are you doing? Living from the inside out. And we move from the inner man of the spirit through the outer man of the soul. And it doesn't matter what external realities are present. It doesn't matter whether life is adverse, chaotic, troublesome, annoying. It doesn't matter. Warriors live in a state of untroubled calm and rest by which they are bound to the inner life of the Spirit. They know that part of their inheritance and their walk with God is that they enjoy a complete confidence in Him. And they realize that all the promises of God are to enable us to be inspired in our dependency. It's great to be totally reliant on the Lord. And one of the things that the Lord is doing is He is deliberately robbing you of your independence. Because it's not good for you to be independent. We're learning to be interdependent. We're learning to be dependent on the people around us, our friends, but also dependent on the Holy Spirit in our lives. See, warriors are people of joy. And they joyfully expect God to come through. And what we're doing is, we know that all we have to do is stand here long enough and He'll come. And we know that, you know, God has a weird watch. And His sense of timing is a little freaky on days. Yeah? We know that um, He's always on time. He just misses lots of opportunities to be early. Yeah? And some of that is deliberate. Some of that is just, ah, oh, He likes messing with you, what can I say? But warriors have settled that whole question of the love of God for them. And so they live in complete assurance about who God is for them. Warriors have a real identity in themselves. They know who they are, and they know who God is for them now. And we stand in that place, and we deliberately trade on that because your favor comes out of your identity. It comes out of your destiny in terms of who you are in Christ and what He has called you to be. All of those things give you a place to stand before the Lord. And so we stand in our identity in Christ. We stand in our destiny. We stand in our promises. We stand in our calling. We stand in our anointing. We stand in all the things that God has contributed to us over the years. We stand in those places. <clears throat> and we ask God for things with a smile on our face. And we know there is absolutely no way that He's not going to do it. Because we know who we are and we know what He has committed to us. And what God commits to you in terms of your life and your ministry and calling, you get to commit back to Him. Because then when you offer yourself, yes, I will do that, I'll step into that, I commit all of that back to you, then He keeps it safe so that you can stand in it and you can learn how to receive under extreme pressure. And those are the best times to receive. When everything's against you, everyone's saying it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. It's just cool to stand and say, yeah, it is. I have a promise. For the times, um, in times of warfare and adversity, we have a boldness and a courage to stand firm in God. <clears throat> but you learn this confidence 
through your life circumstances. So question, what are you going through right now? And what if that is part of your training for reigning? What if God's training you right now? It's like, you know, in the whole area, um, when God is teaching you perseverance, you're not going to get a quick answer on that day. (laughs) If God is teaching you endurance, your situation is going to be prolonged. So you better be able to stand for a few weeks or a few months and maybe longer. If God is teaching you faithfulness, your circumstances will not be bright and shiny and wonderful and easy. They'll be difficult on days. And you'll have to learn things like stillness and quietness. And you'll have to learn how to rejoice. And you'll definitely need to learn how to be comforted by the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you'll eat too much chocolate. (laughs) That's not good. (laughs) All the girls are going, oh, I bind that thought. (laughs) And the thing is, it's the confidence you learn in life that enables a warrior to hold their nerve and to be fearless in the face of enemy attack. It's important for us to live with a growing conviction that the Lord is delighted to pour out with extravagant delight the certainty of His affection towards us. It's so important that you absolutely know that you are the beloved of God and that God is incredibly biased towards you. He favors you. He lifts up the light of His countenance upon you. He beams in your direction. You have His heart. You have His favor. And you need to learn to be confident in that, hugely confident in that. Proverbs 3.26 says, The Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. God is very confident in Himself, and He's going to build that confidence into you. Isaiah put it this way in chapter 30, 15. He said, In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Stillness is so vital to a warrior. You can't win if you're whining. (laughs) So at some point, you have to give up your right to a pity party. Don't look for sympathy. Look to be empowered. Warriors are people who can get up, dust themselves down, and get on with it. They're fighters. They're not looking for rescue. They're looking for a side of God that they know only really exists on the battlefield. And warriors are people who want to get on that battlefield. It's not like, well, I'll fight if I have to. A fight if there's no alternative. Warriors are people who are looking for a fight. They're spoiling for a fight. How many of us know that, you know, the church in America right now is behind the time of her own development? She needs to catch up. We are living in a society where right now, frankly, evil is winning. We're building more prisons than anything else. One in a hundred people in America is either in prison or been in prison. Actually, I think it's in prison right now. What if the problem in this country 
is not crime, it's not terrorism, it's not abortion, it's not poverty, it's not drugs. What if the biggest problem in this country is simply the lack of goodness? Scripture says we overcome evil with good. So where's the goodness gone? What if one of the chief parts of a warrior's armory is the goodness and the favor of God? That we live in the goodness of God and nobody around us is safe. What if the problem right now in America is that there's not enough goodness and there's not enough people who realize that the kingdom of heaven is about being good and doing good. It's about overcoming evil with good. Warriors know how to live in the goodness of God and they know how to pass it on. But it's stillness is so important to us that we learn how to be quiet before God, especially on difficult days. You get to still the clamoring and the panic that life can cause in us. Rest is a weapon. And in the embrace of God's peace, nothing touches me but the confidence of His great strength. Knowing how to access who God is in Himself is such a key part of your development. All of your life circumstances right now are preparing you to be brilliant. You're learning how to be majestic. You're learning how to be warriors. You're learning how to overcome. You're learning how to stand. You're learning how to press in. You're learning how to receive. You're learning how to rejoice. You're learning how to pray. You're learning about the fruits of the Spirit. You're learning the importance of patience. You're learning how to wait on the Lord. You're learning how to see Him. You're learning how He thinks, how He perceives, how He loves to speak. You're learning how He loves to connect with you. You're learning about his heart when it comes to promises and you. Everything you're passing through right now is a learning opportunity. We need to stop treating life's difficulties as though they shouldn't be happening to us. They are training. They're a really important part of who you are. And God allows in his wisdom what he could easily prevent by his power. And the darker the situation, and the more problematic the circumstances, and the more difficult the things we have to go through, the reward on those things is substantially greater. You know, sometimes when God's teaching you authority, you can point at something and say, in the name of Jesus, and bang! It's obliterated. Yahoo! This is great. See, when God's teaching you authority, that's brilliant. When He's teaching you perseverance, (laughs) that ain't going to work for you. The thing is, we want, we want everything to fall to us quickly, easily. The word of authority, bang, in the name of Jesus, that's it. But it doesn't work like the way. It depends what is God teaching you, what is God developing in you right now. You can't be a warrior if you're shying away from endurance, if you're not learning the lessons of how to persevere how to stand, and not just endure like, oh, well, I'm just enduring, you know. Oh, well, I'm going through this situation, and it's going to end one day. (laughs) You're not waiting on the Lord. You're waiting Him out. (laughs) Bad Christian, bad. (laughs) The thing is, if, all you, if, you, if you just endure like this, <sighs> I 
that doesn't count. I don't count. You're like, you ain't learned nothing. I don't count. And I've gone through six months of this. No, you haven't. <laughs> By the looks of you, you probably have another six months to go. <laughs> it's like, sheesh, you plank. <laughs> you could have got through this in three months if you'd learned to rejoice. The thing is, when God puts you through extended situations, he's, He wants to teach you long-suffering with joy. That means you're in an extended situation and you're happy about it. Because <laughs> you're a warrior. And the thing is, warriors take one day at a time. They're not looking for something to end they're looking to receive something in the moment that they're in. They know they can put the end in God's hands. That's His responsibility. The outcome is God's responsibility. The process is mine. So how do I walk through this thing step by step? Well, the first thing is, when you go on a journey, you can rejoice in the outcome, but you don't live there. Otherwise, what happens is we're just like thinking to ourselves, be glad when this is over. Sheesh. I'll be really happy when this is done. And what are you doing? You're postponing joy now. You're putting it off. I'll be happy when. I'll be glad when this is over. Well, but you can be glad now. See, the thing right now, in all of your circumstances, they're not, it's not just about them being resolved. God is not just into, like, resolution counseling with you. <laughs> he wants you to pick up on who He is now. So He's going to look at you and say, excuse me, I'm happy. And it would be a great blessing if you could be happy as well. Yeah? He's joyful all the time. He's peaceful all the time. He loves all the time. And what he's teaching you is about his essential nature. I want to teach you how to be joyful when everything's against you. I'm going to teach you how to receive under pressure. I'm going to teach you how to be at peace when there's a storm raging all around you. I'm going to teach you how to fight and win every time. But I want you to live like I live, with a smile on your face. I want you to think like I do. So in every situation you face, there is a renewing of your mind. There's an enlargement in your heart. There's something that God wants to give you of Himself. And you know, you need to make that your prime motivation. What aspect of the nature of God do I need to receive in these circumstances? You'd better become Christ-like, because only an idiot would go through 12 months of something and not be changed into something better. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Because you know that if you don't learn those things, you're going to have to go through it again. Once is enough, eh? 